Good morning, evening, night, whatever, whenever, wherever. I'm Rooster, and this is my experience setting up game emulation on the Steam Deck using EmuDeck. So many people, myself included, noted from the initial announcement that the Steam Deck seemed like the ideal device for retro game emulation. I have been looking forward to getting this all set up, so here we are. In this video, I will outline my experience on getting emulation set up, while also showing you how I did it, and how the emulation works. So for this, I decided to use a tool called EmuDeck. This is designed to make emulation on the Steam Deck as user-friendly as possible, and that is exactly what I wanted. EmuDeck will basically be doing most of the heavy lifting for us, including installing emulators for us in more recent updates. The EmuDeck website even has a handy five-step guide, which is what I followed to get things working. So let's get started. First off, you need to decide if you're going to be using a micro SD card for your emulation or the internal storage. I had this spare 64 gig SD card sitting around, so I decided I would use that. It's not huge, but should be enough for the amount of emulation I intend to do with it. After inserting the SD card, head to the settings tab and go down to system settings. Here, you can format the SD card into the EXT4 format, which is required by the Steam Deck. Once this is done, you're free to proceed. Now. Let's head on over to desktop mode and start installing EmuDeck. Now we need to head over to the EmuDeck webpage in a browser, scroll down and download. From here, we can pop the downloaded file from the downloads folder to the desktop and run it. At this point, the installer will give you a few options. These are well explained and the choices here are up to you, but here's the ones that I chose. Expert mode for the install, install to the SD card, yes to the CHD conversion tool, no to the PAL tools as although I do have some Linux terminal knowledge, I'm not looking to use it a lot with the Steam Deck, yes to the Steam ROM manager update, yes to the emulation station install, I selected all of the optional emulators to install, yes to RetroArch bezels, yes to RetroArch autosaves, 8x7 SNES aspect ratio, and finally I kept the 16x9 hack for all three systems shown. Now EmuDeck will install everything with the selected settings. This can take a couple of minutes, so I left my Steam Deck to do it. If you chose to install Yuzu, some additional configuration instructions will be displayed. I don't really want retro achievements, so I selected no here, but the choice is yours. And finally, the installation is done. The final window will show you where to put your ROMs and BIOS files. Due to copyright, I can't show you where to get BIOS files or ROMs, so you'll have to do some searching yourself for that, but once you have them, that's where you'll put them. The next stage is Steam ROM Manager. First, you need to exit out of Steam completely. When you do this, the Steam controller settings will disconnect, so you'll lose control of the mouse for a moment. But once it comes back, your left and right click will no longer be the click on the touchpads, but will now be your triggers. Just something worth remembering. So with Steam now closed, we can run Steam ROM Manager. That should have been placed on your desktop when you installed EmuDeck. This is what is going to organize all of your installed ROMs and put them into the Steam UI for you with very little effort on your behalf. You can see down the left side toggles for each emulators you would like to be imported into your Steam library. Deselecting any of these will stop them from being displayed in Steam, but you will still have access to them in Emulation Station if you installed that too. Now we're going to head over to the Preview tab and click Generate App List. Here it will detect all of your ROMs and even download box art for them if the naming convention is correct. If any games are missing their box art, then you can manually download and add images yourself. Here you can see I got lucky and all games found box art. Some even found multiple and I could cycle through to choose the ones I liked. I do have a rather small ROM library at the moment for the sake of this video and intend to expand over time, but I'm sure the more ROMs you have, the more likely you will have some that do not find images just bear that in mind and be prepared to have to maybe grab a couple of images for a couple of your games. Once you're happy, just click Save App List and this will begin the import process. This can take some time depending on how many games you have, so don't exit out straight away. You can check the progress in the Event Log tab to make sure the process is complete. From there, we're done. Head back into gaming mode and all your games should be there. When back in gaming mode, you can head to library and you'll see that Steam ROM Manager has created a bunch of collections for each of your emulation systems. Heading into one of those collections displays all of the imported ROMs for that system like any other game is displayed on the Steam Deck. Loading into Emulation Station will allow you to see all of the systems and games in a much more familiar format for those who have emulated in the past, including any games and systems you chose not to import into the Steam UI. Here is where I ran into my first issue, which took some tinkering to figure out. 
Emudeck is great for making the process very simple, but you can still run into issues with emulation and you will need to be prepared to try some fixes to get things running. You can see here that when I tried to load a PS1 game with DuckStation, the emulator had problems formatting the virtual memory card and then just gave me a blank screen. Nothing would load. I didn't have this issue with the other emulators, so I knew this had to be a mistake on my end. So I hop back into desktop mode and fiddle around with some settings. I tried launching the games from the emulator standalone and tried formatting the memory card manually in DuckStation. Neither of them seemed to work. The solution in the end turned out to be the BIOS files. I had the BIOS files in a folder when they needed to be in the root BIOS directory. So I moved them out of their folder and as simple as that, everything was now working. This was my mistake and the fix was easy but it's just worth noting that issues like this can happen and it will be up to you to solve the issues manually. Google will often be your friend though, so I wouldn't let that put you off emulation. So enough about the setup. How well does this run? That's the most important question. And although results may vary, as is the nature of emulation, I have to say my experience has been amazing. Excluding my own mistakes like the PS1 BIOS issue, everything just works, and well too. During my testing, I tried a few of my games from across the emulators, and I have to say, every game I played ran flawlessly. The performance and stability was amazing, playing PlayStation 1 Tekken 3 was great, one of the first fighting games I remember playing with my older brother, and what really surprised me was how nice it was to use the trackpad in place of the d-pad. It felt a little, little off at first, of course, but I honestly feel getting used to it might be my new favourite way to play fighting games. The PS2 emulation is something that just works so perfectly. The controls felt so familiar to me. Playing Burnout 3 Takedown and Bully just really took me back to my childhood. And even better than that, I can finally go back and play the original PS2 Harry Potter games while I wait impatiently for Hogwarts Legacy to finally come out. It was actually while playing Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone that I realised I could use the per game settings to tweak a few things to get myself some extra battery life. I turned on half rate shading and then limited the TDP to 3. This had no effect on performance of the game at all and yet gave me about 20 minutes of extra battery life while I was on 30%. So it's a nice little boost for basically no drawback. The use of per game settings here too means you can set these settings for any emulated games that perform great with them and get the extra battery life while not causing any issues with your regular library. Playing Nintendo 64 games is where things get interesting. The games run fine, but I found the controls didn't necessarily always marry up so well with a more modern controller layout. So this is where some minor tweaking can really come in handy. The great thing here is that you have Steam controller settings at your fingertips to download or create any configuration you like. This can be used to make controls for almost any game you want, but you also have the RetroArch control settings. As long as you're using one of the Emudeck control layout templates on Steam controller settings, then you have access to the shortcuts, a cheat sheet of which can be found at the bottom of the Emudeck page. Using one of these shortcuts can bring up the RetroArch menu, which I use to make some minor adjustments to the controls for GoldenEye 007. By default, the left stick was forward and backwards and turn left and right. So I swapped it over so that turning was on the right stick where it belongs. This level of control in both Steam and the emulators themselves mean that although some experiences may vary, you really can get things working however you want. So through all of this, what are my final thoughts? The Steam Deck was built for emulation. It just works so well, and Emudeck is a fantastic tool that makes setting up emulation on the Steam Deck as easy as it can be, and it's still improving. Not long ago, there was a 10 step guide on the website instead of the current five steps, and you had to go and get all of the emulators yourself. Now, this is tied right into the installation of Emudeck. I love the Steam Deck and play all kinds of games on it, but now, with emulation, that library of games that I can play has grown to such a large scale. I couldn't be happier. Well, I hope this has helped you decide if you want to emulate on the Steam Deck or even helped you get it set up. Thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to give me suggestions for future videos down in the comments and I'll catch you in the next one.